This week, Drew and I interview Armin Caprielian, managing partner of DAV Cigars, and we get a chance to discuss the Boutique Cigar Association, or known as the BCA. You can check out their website, thebcaa.org, or if you go to, into Google, type in Boutique Cigar Association, it'll come up first. The BCA is an organization that will br- that is uh, to bring together true boutique cigars of the premium cigar industry. We're going to talk about that definition as well. Topics include education, organization, and awareness for family-owned boutique cigar makers and brands and how it affects the retailers. Episode 321 of Stogie Geek starts right now. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Hosempa, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. And we- Cigars, perfected for more than 150 years. Yours to enjoy now. Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Confidence. Confidence isn't walking into a room with your nose in the air, thinking you're better than anyone else. It's walking into a room and not having to compare yourself to anyone in the first place. Welcome to episode 321 of Stogie Geeks. I am your host, Joe Hosempa, AKA Joe Hollywood. And maybe coming soon, Joey Criollo. We don't know yet. Uh, we're not too sure how that's all going to go down. <laughs> Johnny's excited about the my my name here in the studio over the past couple weeks has been slightly uh, altered to Joey Criollo. Um, I kind of like it. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how that goes. This week, we have a chance to talk about the BCA, the Boutique Cigar Association. I think it's a much-needed topic that needs to be discussed. Boutiques are certainly here to stay, for sure. But before we do, introduction of our special guest, Armin Caprielian. I want to introduce the little doc haired boy from Texas, who is joining us remotely from the big state of Texas at a gun range. Yes, at a gun range. They're going to talk about an interesting event they did last night as well. Drew, how's it going? Wonderful. How are you guys doing up there in the Northeast? Uh, last night, uh, we had our, a uh, Texas, uh, gun, at Texas Gun Experience. We had the Smoking Guns and Bourbon mm-hmm. event. Hmm. So, so one, of the, one of the first uh, ever. And uh, we're in the I'd say what is it, a ten million dollar yeah facility? Yeah, ten million dollar facility. I mean, this place is badass to the moment. So we're gonna, gonna have to take weaponry. some time. We're gonna have to take some time at the end of that episode to talk about your event, how that happened, and and what it consisted of. Yeah. And for the story geeks who are uh, listeners who are listening and not watching, maybe you can give us a visual of what took place last night. You know how I love to sit back and sip a bloody mary and listen to visuals about our super awesome oh, industry yeah. here known as uh, Premium Cigars. And Drew, you are joined by Armin Caprielian. He's a managing partner at DAV Cigars. 
He's also uh, started a podcast under the BCA, the Boutique Cigar Association, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. So if you want to check that out, most Stoke, definitely, Stogie Geeks listener, um, the BCA is an organization that brings together the boutique section of the premium cigars, gets together and and uh, talks about the issues that they face. Uh, from a business perspective, from a retailer perspective, from a uh, brand awareness perspective, from a legislative perspective. They've been doing a lot of work. Armin's going to talk to us a little bit about that. Also, um, later on uh, in the next couple episodes, we are going to interview the other host of the podcast who host the show about the BCA. So, Stogie Geeks, you want to stay tuned during the month of, month of March or April as that happens uh, as well. Topics of the BCA include education, organization, and awareness for family-owned boutique cigar makers and brands. And I can tell you, Armin, 100%, welcome back to the show. It's great to have thank you. Thank you, thank you. This is, and I'm not saying this because you're in front of me, I love talking <laughs> small business, and when you talk about the BCA, right. it is like small business 101, 201, and 301. For those of you who went to college, you'll know what I'm talking about. If not, and you need a description, Joe right. H. StoyGeeks.com. Um, I love the fact on your website that you uh, have sections where you talk about the educational component, right, of the BCA. Yeah. Um, the educational component that that – uh, and fight that you have to uh, keep on keeping on, right, of going against some of the 100%. giants within the industry. And then you also have some legislative components with the FDA that is hanging in the crux of the balance. So we'll just uh, shelf that for now. Um, then you have an organization component and a, a brand awareness of the organization uh, and what it does. So if you want to elaborate a little bit about that and how you started that, uh, podcast, you're you you you're a few episodes deep, and one hundred percent. What some of the goals are of the BCA? Sure. Well, first of all, thank you guys again uh, for having me on. It's it's always fun uh, to be on the show. You guys are phenomenal. Uh, uh, you guys were the trailblazers uh, for doing podcasts for uh, the cigar industry. So so cheers and and uh, many more years to come. Um, so yeah, th this is like deja vu because I know last time, the first time I actually came down to Texas, uh, it was for another big event, a cigar spirit magazine. Uh, I was here for that and you guys were kind enough to, uh, have me on the show. And here I'm once again with Drew, who since then is officially our regional rep and he just, uh, hit the ground running. He's phenomenal. I mean, uh, we went to a, uh, we went to a, a very high-end uh, Brazilian steakhouse uh, Wednesday night, and they actually have a, a private um, uh, members-only club. Uh, they have a cigar. They have a cigar lounge, and lo and behold, it was it was just uh, such a nice feeling to walk in there, and then first thing you see are, are your cigars displayed there. So that was really nice, and that was thanks to this man right here, and uh, he's ju he's just uh, tremendous. So he's been such a great asset. We're we're blessed to have them, and uh, you guys are also blessed to have them. So, uh, now going back to uh, what you just asked me um, regarding the BCA, uh, I have to mention, of course, uh, the founder, uh, Gabby Caffey, and uh, of course, he's also the man behind uh, Caffey 1901 Cigars. And I have to stress, as I've done before, the importance of the BCA, how crucial it is uh, as it pertains to the boutiques, and I emphasize the boutiques. Um, there's, there's so much going on and, and so so much uncertainty, uncertainty still um, when you talk about uh, the FDA, when you talk about regulations as they pertain to premium cigars and so on and so forth. We've, we've spoken it was uh, through the BCA that I actually got to first talk to Gabby, meet Gabby. Um, I now consider him uh, more than a close friend, more like a brother, uh, somebody I would collaborate with on anything uh, that would pertain to the cigar industry. Uh, it's it's such a crucial, important platform. Uh, whether 
you're a new brand coming out, whether you've been in the business for a few years, you're, you're trying to grow your business. It's so vital when it comes to what's happening, you know, staying up, uh, you know, up to date with uh, legislation, new laws that are coming into effect, laws that might be coming into effect, so on and so forth. So when my partner Val and I actually got into the business, uh, we reached out to Gabby for that very reason. And he was just um, so warm, so inviting, uh, and just an absolute wealth of knowledge uh, that he was so uh, ready uh, and willing to bestow. And uh, it has been a, an absolute tremendous help to us as, as we started growing um, our business. So I've always urged other, other companies such as DAB Cigars to uh, reach out. And, you know, we want to be a voice for the boutiques. You know, Gabby's just not sitting in his office growing his, uh, his own cigar brand. He's helping uh, other brands uh, grow. Uh, he he's going to Washington D.C. He's meeting with legislatures, uh, so you know there's a lot behind it. I sometimes I have no idea how he gets all of it done, but he does. And um, another gentleman, another good friend of mine, uh, Kerr Viajante. Uh, you guys know him from uh, Stokey Roads. Uh, love his podcast as well, and uh, he came out with his cigar. Uh, fantastic cigar, the Barber Pole. Maybe you guys have had a, a chance to uh, read about it. Um, certainly have him on the show as well. So um, we we talk a lot, we collaborate a lot, and uh, the three of us kind of uh, brainstormed the idea of having the uh, the podcast, which we uh, came up with the name um, "Protecting the Legacy," mm. and I think that uh, that speaks for itself. So uh, we are uh, four episodes in. Uh, you can find it on, on pretty much any platform. And a lot like you guys, you know, these are, these are very pertinent topics uh, that pertain to the cigar industry. Sometimes there are topics outside of, 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 the, of the cigar industry, but somehow we relate that. Uh, uh, and we're we're very straightforward. Um, we try to keep things professional, but sometimes, you know, uh, we do get emotional because we are emotional about this. We're very passionate about what we do. Um, so four episodes in, uh, it's definitely picking up steam. And and again, this is this is not a podcast where we just want to toot our own horn and talk about DAV cigars, talk about Cafe 1901 or, or, or uh, Stokey Roads. It's not that at all. Uh, this is to serve also as a platform for other boutiques to come on, uh, talk about uh, their story, uh, their brand, things of that nature. Um, we, we would love to have some politicians on uh, down the road. Uh, we're speaking about that now, uh, especially it's such a a hot time, you know, May, uh, May is around the corner. And also, as you know, uh, how we're always supportive of the uh, brick and mortars, as they are of us. And we would uh, certainly welcome um, uh, people uh, behind brick and mortar shops to also come on the show and tell us their story. Um, you know, they, they certainly support us as we do them. So um, going into this, that that was the focus. We figured that would be the goal um, of the podcast. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I can attest to that. I've 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 listened to uh, a few episodes of of your podcast. You bring up a lot of interesting Thank points you. that I want to talk about. Um, but mm -hmm. I also want to shed some light on the fact that you want to get retailers involved um, if. You know, you do have uh, a retail partners section on your website that and yeah. the, you know, membership can you, you can join at different levels. You can join as a media outlet. You can join as a cigar manufacturer. You can join as a retailer. There are a bunch of different uh, yes. access points for you to check out on their website. Uh, if you go to the BCAA.org, uh, you can check mm -hmm. uh, check that out. But. Um, getting the retail partners involved is super important. And I want to make reference to the fact that in your episode three podcast, 
Um, I believe it was mm-hmm. uh, Kerry who had said um, it was. It's Kerry Viante, right? Is 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 that how you pronounce the name? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I believe it was mm-hmm. Kerry Viante that said that uh, the millennials are making purchases to small batch outside of the cigar industry. So now we're going to get into a business talk here. In other words, right. they mm-hmm. like their small batch vodka, spirits, bourbon, whichever. They like their craft exactly. beer. They like their boutique cigars. I've battled with myself personally here on this show about using the word boutique. I am all for it. I think it's super cool. I'm glad you guys uh, call yourself the Boutique Cigar Association because I was trying to find a better way to represent here for the Story Geek listener and for the smaller cigar companies to not just throw them in a category of boutique, right? But Mm -hmm. you've done a great job in your episode three, and I encourage the Story Geek listener to go look up that podcast, check that out. Um, you know, you, you've done a great job at the definition of a boutique cigar company, right? And then from there, it, it makes sense that, you know, I've been using the word boutique. I tried to switch to small batch, uh, you know, smaller companies and tried not to. Uh, I, I found myself, even with, with dialogue with Drew, I default to that word. And I don't think that that word or that movement more importantly, is going anywhere. Because just like no. outside of the premium cigar industry w- with craft beer, these new group of buyers, uh, then I believe that Dr. Gabby or vice versa, you had, had, had checked in, they don't want to smoke their grandfather's stuff. That, that's a quote that was on there. They don't want to smoke their grandfather's stuff. And, and it kind of struck a chord with me. I was like, you know something? They bring up a valid point, right? There, yeah. uh, they establish a definition of what a boutique cigar company is. Um, not to steal thunder from your show, but ju- just to keep the the, the show. No, moving, no, please. Right? It's sure. it's um it's uh, uh manufacturers who produce a, under a million cigars. Right? Is that correct? That's the that's the cutoff points, right? And so if it's a million three hundred, I'm sure they can join. I'm sure you go through your thing. I'm sure you're not gonna, you know, uh, uh, throw them out. But but so, but if you think about that, like a million cigars, yeah. it's not boutique. It is boutique when you look at some of the giants. But like that's a business, sure. right? You know, if you're producing a million widgets in any industry or bringing in a million bucks, right? Because think about it, they're not a dollar a piece, right? So if you're bringing in a million bucks in the industry. You are a small business, sure. There are some that do billions, etc. But it establishes a criteria of number one, if you're qualified to join. But number two, even if you're you you, you have room to grow within the organization, that can cast a a, a a assistant shadow with the legislative battles that you're going through and all of that stuff. And so, exactly. With, so with that being said, I was kind of excited that that someone said on the show that you know. You, you, your, the boutiques in general are another way for the consumer to, um, to find their way of whatever journey that they like. And it's true. We all find our way, right? We, whether we're, we're buying clothes or whether we're buying sneakers or whether we're buying premium cigars or spirits or cars or whichever, yep. you, you want to find your way. And the boutiques offer a opportunity for um th- the younger entry level smoker or seasoned smoker to have another right. choice and i really don't think that there's enough retailer buy in on that that's the whole point of my circular conversation right uh, the, so how, how yeah, you want to get absolutely you know, right cuz because the retailers that i visit and and i travel with our day job, uh, Security Weekly, right? I travel, mm-hmm. and we're going to go to San Francisco yep. next week, and we're going to go there, and we're going to pop in cigar shops, and it's amazing how, you know, they, like, which one is the bread and butter? What, they, what, what the retailers need to really understand is it's about moving cigars. It's about Keystone in cigars. I know some of them don't respect MSVP and all of that. That's another discussion for, for another day for sure. But 
like, you want to move cigars, but more importantly, why can't the retailers turn into an educational component, not only for the boutique cigars, but even for some of the older brands? What, what's your thought on that? Well, you started off uh, speaking about the uh, millennials, right? Um, you're absolutely right. They, they, okay, you know, what's new? What's this? You know, they're they uh, they they're really into the, the the newer blends, and it's and every couple of months, it's like, all right, you know, we go to these uh, different shops, we we hold um, tons of events, and it's like, all right, what do you have new? What, what else do you have coming out? Uh, I, I had this, but do you have some, something like? This? That, that's that's really changing when you said they're they're not always looking to smoke their their grandfather's cigar absolutely um so i certainly get that the the education part you just nailed it on the head because i i, I go to so many stores and i feel like they the staff just is not educated properly that when somebody comes in they say oh, okay well well i I like this uh, type of blend. I like a, a medium body. Uh, I've smoked this, this, and this. Uh, do you have that? If not, something similar. So they should be able to take you into the humidor and say, well, if you've smoked this brand before and this is the type of cigar that you enjoy, I can also recommend this, this, and this. Because, yes. look, a, a lot of these boutiques that you know that exist now and and some of the new ones that are are coming out i can honestly when it comes to the quality of the cigar you could put them up against you know the best the the known brands the sure. bigger brands as you said the ones that get rated in cigar aficionado right uh, i can certainly put them up there with the best uh, when it comes to quality but unfortunately things get lost in translation and i've seen it happen you know you have this great brand a retailer has it you know it's 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 got everything you look for in a premium and somehow it just gets lost in the shuffle and it's heartbreaking to see that not you know for for the boutique for the retailer mm -hmm. and for the cus customer so mm -hmm. that's something that has to ch that has to change and I'm, I'm glad you see things that way um because that is one thing that has to be addressed uh, across the board it, it really does. I mean, like I said, when I go into a shop, you know, I don't raise the Stoey Geek banner or anything like that. I just, you know, right. hey, you know, uh, do you have this? Do you have that? Or, or I always like to look, uh, number one, what I can't get my hands on because of the love, mm -hmm. like the different distributions and how, you know, uh, some cigar companies have a better presence in this section of the U.S. than this and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And I'm lucky enough to be in the Northeast where we're a big player on boutiques. But what I've noticed, a lot of cigar shop owners are making a move, and you're, you're on the streets more than I am, you know, selling your cigar and, 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 and creating your, your movement. But I'm noticing, like, you know, I don't know. Like, the, some of them say to me, quote, you know, I don't know, man. Like, you know, we, we, we chase these boutiques, and then they sit on the shelf. Uh, you know, they get hot, and then, you know, the rep leaves, or they, 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 they got distribute they, they got small business objections, basically. You know what I mean? Can't distribute the cigar fast enough. The rep leaves. There's no boots on the ground. There's no brand awareness as much as the big guys. And, 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 and they say, well, I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to shy away from that. And I say to them, why would you? Like, that's an educational component. Like, for example, when you come into Stogie Geeks, okay, whether we're talking about potential sponsorship or a potential interview, there's a criteria that we have. We like to produce, make sure the sound is the best that we can. The yeah, our sure. producers do a great job. Sponsors need to get us the product in order to in, in a timely fashion, so we can do our best to review and articulate that. There's a whole process there. On the security side, there's a whole process you have to go through. Just like the why can't the retailers? And again, I I, I don't understand why they don't want to take the chance uh, and and create an educational component within their retail organization because ultimately you guys yeah. you guys doesn't matter if you're dav doesn't matter if you're ohana doesn't matter if you're your mlb you know it doesn't matter who you are right it, 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 it there needs to be an educational component and here in the northeast it's been fledgling year after year you know and yeah, yeah. and 100 and, and then the reps that do a good job 
you know, uh, if they're done through a brokership, they can do a good job, but they got to stay at a certain level in order to not have uh, the company decide to bring an in-house sales rep. And then, and then the rep goes out, and then, and then the rep's there. So, so I understand that that there is a give and take with within there, but I really think ultimately, if I when I owned a cigar shop, things were much different, right? We 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 right. had fifty six k dial up. There was there was no social media, <laughs> right? No, there, yeah, there was no yeah, social media. So we did the four true. events a year. That was it. Now you have an event. They kind of. They're not creative. They're not watered down. And I really strongly believe that um, maybe mission-wise, I, I would hope to see that within your podcast, you get more re- retailers involved and share their success stories of, you know, I mean, right. I know of a place, even pre-Drew, um, of the underground cigar shop. I mean, he was like, he, you know, I've heard stories of him from Mike Bellity, yeah. who was my original cigar club radio sponsor. And like the guy is is doing phenomenal with with boutiques. I mean, oh, yeah. phenomenal with them, right? And I think that's encouraging, you know, to you because yeah. there's enough space. I mean, let's face it, from a business market share perspective, two percent of the U.S. population smokes premium cigars, right? So, yes. so you know, it's a matter of what they're gonna buy where. But he does a great job at the educational component, and I think it's so important that. If you could kind of focus on that, I know you guys got a lot on your task with the legislative function as well, but um, yeah, well, we certainly do. Yeah, yeah. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I was also just on on what you were saying that uh, you know understanding the mentality of some of the retailers and you know some of them have been doing it for a while. They 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 know their clients. Oh, I don't think my client will try this, that, or the other. But you have to be more open minded about it because, as I said, the the You know, I, I I got a great compliment last night. Somebody uh, smoked it and uh, smoked one of my my cigars and said, "Wow, this just tastes like uh, you know one of the Cubans that I smoke." So, mm-hmm. you know, that's that's proof and that's proof in point. Um, I think I, there's so many moving parts to it. Uh, obviously, the first thing, and, and Drew's going to learn this um, as he's expanding uh, throughout the region, that. Once a, a store carries your brand, that the education part that we touched on earlier, because yeah, when you go in, it's hot, it's new, people people have that interest. You want to keep that interest going. You do an event, uh, you do specials. You know, buy three, get one free. Buy five, get two free. I think that's also very, uh, very, very important. The other thing that they have to also keep in mind, you know, we're not these big guys where we have a whole fleet out there that can go to these shops over and over again uh, consistently throughout the U.S. or or uh, abroad or, or wherever it is. And, you know, you get that call. Oh, I, you know, I haven't uh, seen you in a while because, you know, we're at least in my case, Val and I, uh, you know, try to cover him as much ground as we can ourselves. And it's like, oh, you know, I don't see you. I don't see you. But it's like, OK, but. You know, I'm in New York, and you know, it's not always easy for me to fly to uh, L.A. It's not always easy for me to get to Chicago or even come down here to Texas. That I absolutely uh, love to do. You know, these other guys have these fleet of uh, reps that can go in there anytime. So uh, they have to be uh, understanding of that point that. Uh, you know, we're, we're not just sitting back and, and uh, waiting to do this uh, event somewhere, you know, throw a dart at the uh, at the map and all of a sudden show up and be there. So they have to understand that that fact as well. Mm-hmm. So that's the uh, education comes in. Yeah, of course, you want to keep close ties with the retailer. But obviously, if or whatever the case may be, uh, you know, not to take it personally, not to hold it against us, because you know we we can only do so much as one person, right? So uh, that's one thing. I'm, I'm sorry. Now going on on to uh, what you asked me, just remind me. Uh, oh yeah, sure. Yeah, no. That, I'm, I mean, you know, the the there besides the FDA pending legislation, there have been some news, right. some some pretty decent news. Uh, interesting, yeah, yeah, yeah. interesting news that yeah. had started to release. Uh, number one is the warning labels. 
um, you exactly. know, what the definition, the percentage of box, and 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 there too. Mm-hmm. I, honestly, like if you, I, I I'm not really big on that argument. I mean, and the reason being is like if you've ever done any uh, traveling outside of the U.S., mm-hmm. like they have big signs on tobacco product that has shows like a lung of someone who has you know or a child yeah, yeah. or or like they they, they get yeah, pretty they yeah, get yeah. pretty freaking graphic uh with right. their warning labels yeah, they do. right and you know something bottom line is people are still buying the product people want what they yes, want they are. i mean you know you, you, and and i think a little bit in moderation uh is is fine sure um but now we have um a potential um uh uh a potential committee where the premium tobacco might not be regulated by the FDA. I think that is an awesome, awesome move, especially because that has to happen. Yeah. Because the def, because now we're going to begin to define, which is what I've been saying since 2015 is we need to define our category other than OTP. Other tobacco products, right? You know what I mean. So, thousand percent. So, so, yep. so you know, so now we can begin to find, and then once we define, and then um, I remember speaking of Dr. Gabby. I remember Abe. God, this had to be like 2014, maybe that I know of. 2015. I mean, he's a doctor, and he created premium mm-hmm. cigars. There's different. Yes, he is. There's different with the mortality rate than there. And I'm not here to say. Quit smoking cigarettes or quit smoking vape or whatever. Whatever you want to do is what you want to do. That's what makes America great. You know what I mean? But, right. it, but yeah. um, you know, there's a certain process and there's a certain stigma that comes with, quote, unquote, tobacco anywhere, you know? So take us through, like, your thoughts on some of this pending legislation or oh, sure. what, what you think. And if you want to speak under yourself or the BCA, that that's fine, too. Either one. I, I can do both. I can do both. Awesome. Um, well, well, starting with the uh, warning labels, I think that was a fantastic start because, you know, you have a majority of a beautiful box covered, as you said, some of them with these, uh, you know, graphic photos. And we had to deal with that uh, shipping overseas uh, because there are countries that uh, require you to have these graphic photos on every box. They have uh, a few different uh, ones mm-hmm. and you have to al- alternate them. And I tell you, you look at some of these photos, it's like you don't want to pick up a cigar and smoke it. <laughs> For sure. So, so, so having, having that, I, I think that's, that's a huge step. And I always found that it was, uh, it was unfair because here we are, you know, covering like, let's say a majority, you know, a, a box and then you pick up a, a cigarette box and the warning labels, you know, on the side. Yep. So, so that I think uh, is de- definitely a right step. Then, then what Trump uh, said recently that uh, uh, then the FDA should be appointed to deal uh, with the uh, with the industry. So that's interesting. Let, let's see who you know wh- what organization is going to come together to now start dealing with the uh, tobacco industry. And not too long ago, there there was also um, uh, that that big breaking news of uh, well, if you're a premium, if you if you make premium cigars, if your cigars retail for twelve dollars and above, you're safe. Mm. Now, now let's see. Uh, since since that news broke, I haven't heard much more about it, but I do know that May is around the corner, so. Um, it, is it slowly moving in the right direction? I think so. Um, is it enough at this point? No, there, there needs to be done. I, I mean, in my opinion, premium cigars should be exempt. This is, uh, this is some, something where it, the recipe hasn't changed in hundreds of years. Um, you, to actually categorize a premium cigar next to uh, a vape, an e-cig, or even a cigarette, we're talking apples and oranges here. So I'm hoping uh, with the uh, Trump administration that they're just going to, you know, wash their hands and, and say, you know, be done with this. Uh, premium cigars are exempt. But we'll see. We're still uh, biding our time. And 
seeing how things will unfold come May. Yeah. Well, that's one of the, and that was one of the important things that I know Arm and I were talking about these yesterday when we were driving around uh, in Texas here, and I had to say Texas like we don't know where we're at. <laughs> driving around, and we're, you know, we were, and, and he brought up this point, like you know, the whole thing about I think we were we were talking about the subject of uh, products, you know. Uh, oh, products. Yes, yeah, sure. you know, yeah. And we were talking about you know you know it, it, it's a wait and see at this point why jump into some other vehicle when this vehicle hasn't even arrived fully we don't know how it's being built we don't know what options are going to be there so you know the the whole deal with that was just to you know really follow through and just kind of wait and see you know uh and and see what's happening and and sure enough you know in the last few weeks as you stated joe you know things are things are coming out you know things are you know new uh uh you know with trump with the uh, fda and of that nature oh yeah i, so, I mean cer- certainly yeah, Drew. I, I mean things are certainly coming out uh definitely uh i also believe and and know for a fact that you know if we're going to set a separate committee outside of the fda now we can begin to to define mm-hmm. par- parameters for doing business i mean you, you got to think of yes, you, yes. you got to look at it from a business perspective and this is why I think Story Geeks is so unique in the industry, right? It's because no one asks the real, like, hard questions. And it's like, you know, these are family businesses, right? I know uh, a bunch of boutique cigar owners just from in and out my, my cigar resume or Stogie Geeks. These are family businesses that are trying to operate – without any sort of formal direction as to what the proper way is to produce their product, number one, distribute their product, number two, design their packaging in product, number three, right? I probably have four and five, right? But the Bloody Mary's kicking in, okay? So, you know. Good man. Yeah, yeah right? So it's like, it's like, how do you, you know, at, at least if parameters can begin to set, now you can now digest that, right? It kind of reminds yeah. me of, it kind of reminds Some me of like, like spam rules for, for like, in, for, for email, right? For email. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, in London, I think it's the GDPR or, or whatever it's called, right? I'm probably going to get smacked around by Paul for not memorizing that, right? But it's like, you know, you have certain protocols <laughs> that you have put in place in order for you to effectively communicate through someone via email for unsolicited emails. Some rules are stronger in other countries than here in the United States. But again, we have defined parameters of how to communicate or solicit our product, okay? And um, I'm hoping that with this new committee, that's what the BCA gets, but that's also what even some of the big guys get so that now you guys can begin to say, okay, this is what's in front of us. This is how we're going to have to pivot to do business, or this is what we're going to have to do in order to continue to do business, or, oh, shit, we're really screwed. You know what I mean? So, yeah. so uh, but, but, but it's like it's been in limbo for five years that I know of. Um, I've been talking yes. about it for five years, uh, either via Cigar Club Radio or Stogie Geeks. And so I'm kind of hoping that th- we can at least uh, define a parameter so that you can adapt and pivot, innovate if needed, and then move forward. You know, in regards to Predex, I mean, yeah. it's a vehicle. But it's a vehicle that you don't know what the parameters are either. So it's like, it's like you know, if you want to jump in a car, you need to know the speed limit. You know what I mean? If you're on a side street, you're probably going to yeah. be at 25, 30 miles an hour. You shouldn't do 80. But if you're on the highway right. and the speed limit is 75 you might, and someone else is doing 80, you might be able to get away with, with, with 80. And some boutiques want to get out and do 100 miles an hour. Some are very comfortable being ultra boutique and doing their thing. And again, that's their business model. But at the end of the day, these are family businesses. You're affecting lives of people. And then you're also affecting lives of employees on the other side of where you're getting the product from. Because if there's no demand for your product, they're not rolling. They're not making money. It's 100%. You know? I'm glad... I. I just want to throw in a little, little joke. He, he just gave the analogy of going, some people going 80 miles an hour, some people going 85. 
I think we beat that yesterday. I wanted to, you know, give a special thank you. Uh, Joe, I got to tell you that there's a reason I love coming down here because the community is just unbelievable. And uh, I've been so pampered. Um, <laughs> yeah, you get to drive a fancy sports car. He's already laughing. Car. You get to drive a fancy sports yeah. car. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I come down here. They're like, ah, oh, for the next few days while you're down here, why don't you go uh, drive around in an Aston Martin Vantage? I was like, are, are you kidding me? So <laughs> kudos, the, the the name of the guys are... Uh, uh, Enver and yes. uh, Seth. And they're from... Red Dallas, Aston Martin. Yeah, uh, great thanks to those guys over there. Um, but, you know, going back to what you said, the, the new agency, uh, whichever agency they decide to... Uh, uh, to a point, uh, you know, maybe this time they'll put the horse in front of the carriage rather than the carriage in front of the horse right. and actually have a definition of a premium cigar before they figure out how they're going to regulate right. it. And the other point to that, yeah. uh, the other point to this conversation is that, you know, they involve the cigar industry uh, to a point, you know, to help set those parameters uh, mm -hmm. You know, I've asked, you know, uh, ask a lot of questions, measure everything twice, cut once kind of deal. So, you know, to get the input from everyone, um, you know, from from the industry, I think that's important. But who in the industry, you know, I'm not going to pick on PCA or, you know, anybody else, any other organization that's within the industry. I'm just saying as a whole, collectively, mm -hmm. I think it, I think it's a good uh, roundtable discussion, you know, to, to help them. Uh, you know, put the rules out there, put the parameters. Uh, yeah, or, you know, but, yeah, a thousand percent. And that, well, when I went through earlier, uh, you know, so many times Gabby's made trips to Washington, D.C., and has mm -hmm. sat with legislators, and the man has written countless, countless articles. Uh, you know, as you mentioned, Joe, and uh, during the beginning of the show, the man is a doctor. I mean, he can, he's really gone in, into detail. Um, about effects of uh, tobacco as a uh, premium cigars, or rather, as opposed to uh, what uh, e cigs can do and, and cigarettes can do and so on and so forth. It seems like they need to be educated, at, at, uh, as, uh, as uh, Drew just said. And again, this is this is something that the that the BCA is doing. It's, it's not only just um, a, a, a place for uh, retailers to reach out or other boutiques to reach out but it's also uh for us to meet with legislatures uh and whoever this new agency is going to be and things like that yeah <clears throat> excuse me so we're going to see it's going to be a very very interesting uh, uh couple of months ahead of us and uh you know we'll see where we are mm -hmm. and dare i say because we've been talking mm -hmm. about this for so long and um, you know, is it the fact that they just don't know? Like, like you know, Doctor, like, like, like I would love to travel with 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 when Drew Newman, uh, of J C Newman, went to speak on the legislative yeah. floor. Like, I only need, yeah, I only need like three minutes, and and three minutes on the floor, and my three minutes on the floor would would mm -hmm. be to ask them number one, define the parameters. So that these businesses can adapt, innovate, learn how to survive, pivot, seek funding, build a different business model, whatever they need to do, number one, okay? Number two, I would say, do you even have a definition? Is this a money grab? I don't think it's a money grab. I think it started out as a way for government to seek funding from an industry and they started an exploratory process that raised a bunch of alarms. Now, I've said this on Cigar Club Radio. I was told by, by, by three people that, number one, you don't know what you're talking about. No, no, no. no I do know what I'm talking about, right? Because it, I believe that it started out with the FDA as an exploratory phase that embellished into finding out what – type of not money they can get but are they being properly regulated quote unquote and are we taxing them accordingly or is there more revenue that could come to the table and the reason why i say that is because if you look outside of the cigar industry you can look in the marine industry what if you're a boat that travels and, and ships goods across the pond pick a pond 
Atlantic or Pacific doesn't matter, and how they're taxed differently. What if you talk about uh, 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 gun regulation? You buy a gun in San Francisco, it gets transferred here. There's some sort of a property tax element. There's a waiting period. There's a there's defined parameters that you have to go through, right? Uh, other industries, craft beer, right? Since we talk about boutique, craft beer, it gets measured on a certain uh, amount yes. of ounces or cans or growlers or however that's defined, but they have a methodology to define that, right? There are tons of exploratory yes. committees out there. What about a state that never told, caught, told, T-O-L-L-E-D, told, told cars, right? Try to say that if you're from yeah. the Northeast. And they say, yeah, well, we're going to put tolls in. <laughs> uh, well, you know, well, we're going to put tolls in instead of charging for a car tax or whichever. And that's going to even things out or whatever. When you travel to different places, you have different tolls that you go around. So it's an exploratory committee. And I just think it, it got like, way out of hand. Um, and, and, and the numbers sure. they were throwing around frightened a lot of sm uh, smaller companies. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, just to touch on that, I mean, look, when you com compare the premium cigars to, let's say, uh, other industries or cigarettes, we're we're pretty much at the at the bottom of that, right? The trough, right? Way low in the trough. Yeah. yeah. So you have that. Okay, uh, exploratory was a good word uh, that you used, um, and it it did it did get out of hand because okay, um, you know, premium cigars are are here, but yet. If we're all subjected to the the equivalency testing and all that, that uh, you know, the, the time is ticking. It's going to be devastating to all of these companies because they can't afford to do all of that. Uh, they're just you're going to see uh, if that would happen. It, you're going to see a lot of boutiques just disappear overnight, and I, I just can't imagine what that's going to be like. And that's going to have such a snowball effect. You know, whether you have salespeople here, you know, you close your factory, whether you're in Honduras, Nicaragua, uh, Dominican Republic, all those people employed who count on, on uh, count on this to make their living. I mean, it's, it's I can't imagine the, the type of repercussions that that would come out of it. So uh, sooner than later, uh, we need to have this uh, all rectified. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they need to define parameters because. It, 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 like it, it, cigarettes are defined. We know what a cigarette is. We know what a vape is. Yeah. You know there. Are, yeah. The vape is in the 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 other tobacco products. I was shocked. Uh, I went to a pending regis a led pending legislation for premium tobacco here here in Rhode Island. Uh, we're taxed at a fifty cent cap tax if it's above a dollar eighty seven. So basically, we all know premium okay. cigars go above a dollar eighty-seven. So, so uh, usually at right. that price point, it's machine made. It's not a premium cigar. So we have a fifty-cent cap tax, and they want to raise it to eighty. <coughs> so mm -hmm. we're like, okay, you know. But then they wanted to take the cigarette tax from four four twenty-five a pack to four fifty a pack. That got approved. Premium cigar tax stayed at fifty. Uh, it's pending to go to eighty. It could change July one. Here, okay, like it's gonna be thirty cents more. You know, it is what it is. But at least there's some sort of a parameter. But I honestly think that it's exploratory committees that does that because I know that in the cybersecurity industry, when companies mm -hmm. uh, get annoyingly enough to the big guys, they buy them out, and they're and they're taxed differently. So the government, yeah, yeah. so so the government is even saying, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, this company that did a billion dollars a year was taxed at a billion dollars a year but it's sold at 5 billion usually it's 6 to 10 times more of what the market share could say so if it's a billion dollar company might get bought out as a 10 billion dollar company we hear the news all the time okay the stock options go if they were IPO'd or if they did stock options right. okay fine but the point is if you follow the bouncing ball tax wise the government got taxed on the million dollars the people who profited from the ten billion dollar purchase now gets in the form of either a personal K one or business equity and gets taxed on the other end. But yet, you injected nine billion dollars of untaxable revenue. That's the point of my conversation. You you, you injected so 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 the right, government point well so, made. So 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 the government is saying, whoa, whoa, whoa we go we gotta we gotta talk about this whole cybersecurity thing. 
you know, because mm -hmm. we have, and that's just one company. I mean, I could tell you there's been like 10 companies this month that have gotten bought out, and, and those are buyout numbers for a particular company. But here's the point. You have $9 billion of, 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 of un, unidentif unident unidentifiable revenue. So I, that's why I come to the conclusion because I always try to say, okay, you know, it's not all about the cigar industry. Industries will learn to adapt and survive as as they go, right? Um, what is the, the the main focus? And the main focus has to be an exploratory committee to make sure that it's regulated properly, number one, and to make sure that they're getting the tax revenue, number two, because it's all about the tax revenue. I mean, all we got to do is watch any political debate to, at any level, local, a state, or federal to kind of come to that conclusion, you know? So I, that's what I would say on the floor. Like, define it so we can move. And was this really an exploratory committee? And the fact that they dumped it on the, the, the FDA, I'm super happy that they're not going to. Because now we can begin to have true, or, or not we, you guys, because you guys are more on the front line than story geeks, right? You guys can now begin sure, to have sure. front line yeah. discussions with the focal point committee to talk about the proper way to move forward. And who knows? You you might get taxed in some sort of a function. There may be a fee. It might be 10000 as opposed to the 250000 that they've thrown out. You know? At least they could... At least you can work with the right people yeah. to make it realistic. That's all. Because I think it needs to be realistic. Or what will happen, the catastrophic picture you paint, I can see your perspective being, being a boutique cigar company, sure. Um, what if somebody really likes your cigars and is one of those old times right. we talked about? What if they make you an offer? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> what if they say, you know, I really like those Dav cigars. Or I really like those, 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 those Dr. Gabby cigars. Or I really like MLB or Ohanas or Noel Rojas or whoever, whoever, whoever. Yeah. Let me make him an offer. Because if you don't think yeah. that can happen, I mean, look at Drew Estate, right? They weren't boutique. They started out as boutique, then they grew, and then they got bought out by a swisher. So if you don't think that that's going to happen, of a lot of consolidation and a lot of moving, I mean, which I think is like, okay, you guys or, or any member of, of the BCA, you got to produce good stuff. Because, you know, if you produce 100%. good stuff enough to make, to, to, to make uh, awareness, they're going to want that market share. It's all about market share. Because, again... Two percent of the of, of the yeah. of, of the U.S. population smokes premium cigars, you know. And then there are other companies who are boutiques 100%. who don't even need United States sales. You can go make it all across the pond. Right. With, there's that too. There's That's that right. too. So that will affect the industry because now we'll be forced to smoke our grandfather's stuff. And that's been talked about a lot. Mm. And. Uh, you know that's that's something I would never want because I would be heart heartbroken over that because, you know, obviously, you know, I don't I don't just uh, say this. Uh, you know, I I I am a proud American, and I'd love for my product to be here uh, and and sold throughout the U.S. You know that that to me is 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 uh, very important. It, it's it's uh, it's very crucial. As as far as uh, like you said, if you're a boutique and you. Uh, uh, you grow, you get to a level. Okay, now you're selling over a million, or or whatever the case may be. Um, and uh, uh, and uh, Karen and I have, have spoken about this. It's, you know, it's not like okay, then all right, we're done with this, and uh, you know, we're you know, with with the BCA, we're always always going to be here, and we're always here to support any boutique company, any newcomers. That's not going to change. It's not like okay, tomorrow, hey, hey, I, I just sold ten million cigars. See you later. Right. You know right. that that's not that's not going to happen because now we have uh, experience, we have knowledge, uh, so on and so forth, and it's a matter of um, passing that down. You know, we're we're on the board now. Maybe we're not on the board tomorrow, but you have to have a, a, a system in place where. where that that's also another component that is important for for its uh its uh, continuation and keep reinventing you know just keep absolutely keep you on have top to. of the trends keep on top of changes keep on top of you know i mean there's i mean the united states as itself i mean the regions just you know keep it on top of those uh uh, uh 
I, you know, ideas. Uh, just they're staying there and, and being and don't don't let it get stagnant. Is what I'm trying to say. A thousand percent. Yeah, you know, yeah. I think I, I think I think that's what happened in this last decade. I think you know other organizations have let things become stagnant, mm -hmm. and then that's what happened. Yeah, agreed. Right. Agree. Drew, do you have a question for Armin on behalf of the the BCA or, or or anything BCA related before we pivot to your super awesome event and talk a little bit about DAV as we wrap up? <laughs> Not really, man. We've been I don't know. <laughs> we talked about so many different things. That's we uh, did. Yeah. We did. Oh, I, I it's think all it fair. You don't you don't want to include your boy Joe? That's cool. No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> That's all, all right. right. <laughs> No, no, no. I think I, you know, I think that uh, their podcast. I mean, like I said, I've I've gotten into the first episode, and uh, you know, I really encourage a lot of our Stoke Geeks listeners to to, you know, to to check them out. Thank you. And again, educate educate yourself, uh, educate your uh, your lounge. You know, educate mm -hmm. the brick and mortar owner. Uh, let them know, hey, this is out there. Check it out. You know, and it's just, I mean, there's nothing that goes well with a cigar than just pin down some head headphones and and just listen to. Good conversation, you know, educating yourselves, continue educating yourself, and just becoming more, uh, how do you say, finger on the pulse. Of yeah, you have to at all times. Right now. Yeah, a thousand percent. Yeah, you definitely uh, need that. And and, and the organization, uh, you know, does so much. I was not aware of all of the work, and I'm probably still not just from listening to the podcast, of what the BCA actually does. You know, like yeah. all of the, 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 the work that it does in order to represent these brands, you know, as consumers, we're always like, what's new? What's hot? Let's talk about it. How'd you get started? Where'd you go? Yeah, sure. Uh, you know, but it's like at the end of the day, like the, the they're family businesses, they're family right. businesses. And even some of the bigger businesses are family businesses, too. I get that. But. You know, the the family businesses and, and its livelihood, and, and it's got to be incredibly frustrating to go to work every day and not know how to behave, right? It's yeah. like an employee, right? Yeah. You have a 250 you, you operation, and you're in cubicle world, and there's no yeah. HR settings on how to behave. You can get pretty rowdy pretty quick. You know a thousand I mean? percent, yeah. Joe. You know? A thousand and, percent. And, and, and that's where I would stop if I were on the floor. I'd be like, listen, we need, you know, and I know... Uh, I, I've expressed this before, so it's it, it's not like riveting that I'm saying that, but but that's where I would start. It's like, well, you know, you open up a can of worms, of you know, you're, you're almost giving them permission to tax the boutiques and to proceed with whatever things. No, define parameters. Period. I, I'm asking you to define parameters on how you want me to behave. You know what I mean? It's like story games. Right. You know, if I, I but you have to, we we have a certain protocol and that's the way that and i believe that drew and i have jumped on this bus as stogie geeks being one of the pioneers in the cigar podcast yes. industry and drew and i oh, have yeah. jumped on this bus and now we're the conductors i mean what are you gonna do it's it's, right. it's business right it's a it's business i mean how many cigar companies have started and so and so left that company to go to another company roll his or her stuff and then got bigger or whichever. I mean, you know, it, it's just business, right? So yeah. I don't know. I, I just I, I just hope that those parameters are defined soon, so that now you and me there, both. there's an incentive for the retailers to get behind you guys. You know, what's uh what's coming up with sure. uh, DAV? What's uh, anything? Uh, any riveting well, well, news? Well, I was going to say that. And um, well, yeah, there is. But uh, the last uh, point I wanted to make about that, you know. As far as um, uh, urging the boutiques to uh, tune into the podcast, and uh, um, uh, you know they, they say there's strength in numbers, right? It's a word I like to use all the time, which is uh, solidarity. Uh, as it pertains to uh, DAV, we do have uh, actually, uh, as as I'm here with you in Texas, uh, my partner Val is uh, at the factory in DR going through um, some new tobacco that we got our hands on and we're working on a couple of new blends. I'm very excited about that, so uh, stay tuned for that. Um, as far as, uh, I know you asked about the event, it's it's so funny, a certain someone just walked in and I was about to talk about her on the podcast. Yes. So maybe there's a good time for us to transition into that. Joe, you're the boss. You call it. Yeah, go for it. You're the boss. You're, so, you're, you're so the boss, sir. This, uh, <laughs> me? No, no. I'm, I'm a little guy. 
So Drew and I are currently seated uh, at a place uh, in Texas called the Texas Gun Experience. And uh, I don't know if she's shy or not, but uh, I don't know. Should we have her just wave, wave at the camera? Uh, I always have to give a Jira. shout out to uh, Jira Come Hutchins. Here. She is, well, aside from a million bottles on her hand. Just say hi. That's, say hi to Joe and the Stogie. That, what's see up? that face? Yeah. You see that face? She, there's uh, there's no one like her. When it comes to premium cigars, whether it comes to gun legislation, uh, she does it all. She was actually, I met her in October when I was down here for the, for the, for the uh, event we did with uh, 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 Cigar Wine and Spirits, and uh, I got to meet her. And she actually was instrumental um, in having this place uh, come to life. And uh, she said, well, hey, how would you like to have a cigar event here? I said, you mean I get to fly back down to Texas, get pampered, uh, shoot some guns, smoke <laughs> cigars, and meet amazing people? If you twist my arm enough, uh, yeah, I can come down for that. So she was talking to drew about it and they came up well she actually came up with a brilliant name um smoking guns smoke and guns smoke and guns so, i like it so yeah it was basically uh pairing our dav cigars with uh high-end bourbons so i want you to picture coming into this incredible incredible uh place where you had food high-end bourbon cigars shooting tactical weapons and just uh, having a great time with uh, wonderful people. So this is the person responsible for it. I mean, it was sold out in no time. Um, that sounds like a creative one... event. I hope shooting guns came yeah. before bourbon. <laughs> uh, actually, if, if, if once you started drinking, they cut your, uh, they cut your uh, bracelet. So there's absolutely no shooting uh, after you Smart started move. drinking. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, no, no. There, uh, everything is very strict. So uh, thanks to Joseph Stanier, of course, again, uh, to Jira and the whole team here at a Texas Gun Experience. And if you are a gun enthusiast, this is the place. I mean, they spent, I think, $10 million on a very high-end facility that pretty much caters to all your needs when it comes to uh, firearms, uh, <laughs> firearms. Yeah, even, even knives, guns, oh, yeah. tactical weapons. Uh, so I was uh, just like a kid in a candy store, and uh, they're just always so warm and inviting. So I'm going to look for any excuse to have another event and come down here and hang out with these guys and her. And yeah, that's so awesome. That's a good question. If you find yourself in Texas, come over to Great. Come over to Texas. So uh, when you're in Texas, uh, we're just, you know uh, located just right behind uh, DFW Airport uh, here in Grapevine, Texas. The Texas Gun Experience. So if you find yourself here in Texas, you definitely got to make this a destination to stop by That's and right. check out this fabulous place. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think it's super cool that, um, and it's a creative event to to bring awareness, right? Uh, camaraderie and uh, gun enthusiasts or knife enthusiasts to come on down and 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 do that. Uh, sure beats cigar and karaoke, which is happening here in the Northeast. I'm very upset. <laughs> I'm very upset. I'm so over it. I said that. Man, hey, we got to get you to Texas, brother. We got to save you from that. I said, <laughs> I said jokingly on the show. This is a true story, right? I said jokingly on the show about a month. I says, next is these freaking damn cigar shops here in the Northeast with the non-creativity uh, are going to start singing karaoke. And when I got the freaking thing in my email, come to blah, 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 cigar shop for cigars and karaoke, I just about lost it. I'm like, are you well, kidding that's me? That's your fault. Just look at the universe. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. I, I, I put that out there, right? You blame it yourself. <laughs> I put that out there. I don't think I could ever look at another event the same. I mean, it's just un, un, unbelievable. Um, well, we're, we're super blessed in Texas to be able to do down here, too. But we, we still have an adult mentality down here. You know, we're still able to do stuff, uh, you know, like this down here. And, you know, we've got to take advantage of it while we can and, and fight for you know our ability to still be able to do that and so that's that's kind of what we're doing down here is kind of fighting the good to, you know the good fight and the second amendment fight but then you know man we all love you I mean we love bourbon and we love cigars and we love you know getting people together for that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, selfishly this was an event pretty much for me because it took everything that i loved mm -hmm. and brought it together you know cigars bourbon you know guns and people so it was really just you know something i wanted to do <laughs> nice yeah, and, and food nice that's yeah, awesome so 
Yeah, I don't want to go home tomorrow. That's all I can say. Yeah. And we got this. We got this boy in an Aston Martin too. I heard. I mentioned that in the, I, in, I, in the I show. Heard, I, I heard. <laughs> <laughs> I I heard about the Aston Martin. We're just Martin. being braggadocious at this. Point. Yeah, it's getting pampered. I, I, well, hey man, it was good to meet you. Yeah, um, you too. I look forward to man. I look forward to being on the podcast sometime. Um, to, yeah. to talk to you guys a little bit more. But I got another event that I've got to go do because you know people love oh, news yeah. and guns. So I got to roll, man. Hey, all right. All right. Thanks. You're the best. Right, See ya. Thank you. No, nah, absolutely. I think you know. And again kind of solidifying our points that we brought up over, over, over this past hour, um, and Drew, yeah. is, yeah. you know, that's a highly regulated field, but they have parameters <laughs> as to how, how, how they have to operate and work. Sure they do. You know what I mean? And I think that once that's defined Correct. for the premium cigar industry, I think that um, a lot of the boutiques, and as well as the bigger guys and gals, will 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 at least have a base a baseline in order to how to proceed. A thousand percent. That's right. Mm. Um, and uh, I just uh, just another friendly reminder. Uh, it's available on any platform. The uh, the podcast is protecting the legacy. Okay. So uh, we we urge people to tune in. Obviously, we we we, we love you guys and. Um, uh, thank you for uh, the opportunity not only to have me on, uh, but for future episodes to have uh, Dr. Gabby Caffey on and Kervi Um Certainly uh, uh, two gentlemen who are a wealth of knowledge, and uh, I'm sure it'll be for a very interesting listen. Mm. Yeah, and it's I think it's great that uh, we're going to be able to get your perspective and then their both perspectives on separate interviews as well. Um, since you sure. guys are the three hosts uh, of the show. Um, and again, uh, having a podcast is, is really a smart move. Um, you know, not only because we do it, but you know, it, it, it you know, it, it kind of replaces the, the blog, you know what I mean? Uh, of, yeah, you know, yes, it, right. it's a video blog in our case, yours would be an audio blog. You know, and, and, and it replaces the block, and it's a great place to have discussion. And I can tell you from my experience with AM radio uh, or mm -hmm. FM radio or there, um, your political leaders are listening. Now, I know they're listening yes. more of an outlet of there, but I, I've been blessed with my Cigar Club radio that two laws were actually changed in Rhode Island pertaining to the craft beer industry. As far as the amount of uh, ounces you can take um, with you when you leave premise, you know what I mean. And then, sure. and yeah. the, and again, they, they, there's a whole way they operate with the farm to table because some of them operate on the old farm laws, so they can't open up on a Sunday, but they open up at and I'm making the time up four o'clock in the afternoon to eight o'clock at night or whatever yeah. the, the, the 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 twilight hours or however they zone it. But at least, again, they have parameters yep. on how they can operate. And we've began to do some dialogue. And I actually had the president of the Rhode Island Brewers Guild on my show. And he talked mm -hmm. about that because wow. Connecticut and Massachusetts were kicking their butts in regards to the amount of breweries that would come to Rhode Island. And since they – when he did the, the original interview, um, it, it was done on a smaller radio station I was on. And then it got to the big news station. And then it transferred into legislation in, in there. But since then, there were only six craft breweries, and now we're up to like 30-something in Rhode Island. Which, yeah. if you put that mm -hmm. in perspective for you Story Geeks listeners, if there's no traffic, you can drive through Rhode Island in 33 minutes. It's just as small as, what, Delaware, <laughs> right? It's, it's like, it's small. Yeah, it's, it's true. It's, it, I think it's Very a mile true. smaller than, than, like, Delaware, right? And, and, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and, and, and so, you know, it, 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 it's great because once you produce your podcast and topics and you get some political people on there, it creates mm -hmm. that blog perspective as opposed to just sending them to a written blog. But now you can begin to have true dialogue and hopefully get to the crux of your problem. You know, a thousand percent. You know, awesome, Drew. You have any last comments? No, I just uh, getting... I think we're under fire. Yeah, we're under fire over here. <laughs> oh, they're, they're starting to shoot up the guns. Oh yeah, oh yeah. They're starting, oh, yeah. To, they're starting to shoot up the guns. Cool. Story geeks, right. listen is I want to remind you that McAuliffe Cigars is looking to 
have an ambassador program. If you want to become an, a, a cigar ambassador, you go to StoryGeeks.com, click on the McAuliffe Cigar banner. You get an ambassador coin. You join a private face group membership. You get cigars at McAuliffe events. Exclusive contest for ambassadors, 25% discount on all swag items, and behind the scenes of a boutique cigar company. And also uh, in Q3 or 4, we are going to be doing a roundtable to share the ambassador experience for McAuliffe Cigars. Drew and I are looking forward to see how that project goes. I also want to remind you that there will be no Story Geeks next week. I am on travel. I am going to awesome. I am going to awesome San Francisco. Johnny wanted to do something in a cigar shop. I'm going to sit in a cigar shop. I don't think he's going to film me. Because we have a tight schedule over there. So our next show will be the first Friday in March uh, there. That's just a quick programming note. And we're also going to kick off our contest with J.C. Newman on how Stoya Geeks can uh, get their hands on uh, a super project that they're coming out with. Drew and I yeah. are going to elaborate a little bit more on that. So you want to stay tuned to the Stoya Geek show. Uh, there you go. Drew, any final comments before I, I take us out? Let's see. So if you got any uh, good emails for me, definitely send them to me, Drew, at <laughs> StoeyGeeks.com. If you have complaints, send them over to Joe. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Uh, not, what is your email, by the way? Joe H. Joe sure? yeah. at StoeyGeeks.com. You know, I got an email. I got an email from uh, a listener who does another podcast, and he says, yeah. why do you beg for emails throughout the whole show? And I quote, and I says, uh, what do you mean? I don't beg for emails. I like to talk to my customers. Maybe he should try it that. Maybe he should try it sometime because I know you're watching me. I know you're watching me, right? Uh, maybe you should try it sometime. You might get some more listeners and you might learn something. You know what I mean? That's right. I don't beg for emails. I, I send all your complaints to Drew at StoryGeeks.com. That's a quick programming note. And Drew will address <laughs> them all. According. I'll tell you, ever since I've been putting complaints in your hand, I've gotten less and less email, which is right. good. Have yeah, you been get getting a, complaints or no? Yeah, I'm getting, all, no, I'm getting a lot of the benefits of uh, good email, so yeah. I'm good. Yeah, and I know our friend Augusta. <laughs> I know our friend Augusto who's oh, yeah. listening. Augusto is like Gustavo. saying Gustavo. Uh, like yeah, Gustavo. Gustavo you... Yeah, he says Gustavo, he's yeah. yeah he's saying that uh, you know me, me That's and Drew. That's my son's is, name by the name. Well, okay. He says that uh, him and Drew are still waiting for their cigars. I I I need an intern. I need an intern there to go. go out and go shopping and to actually do that and get that done there. So just I, I will take care of that. Uh, I promise. It, that's getting done in the month of March. That is like on the goal, and that's that. that it's got to get done. It's getting ridiculous now. It's been well. March will be six months, so I'm I'm almost embarrassed. At five months, I'm, have... at five months, it's funny. At six months, <laughs> it, 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 it's a problem. You know. So I will have I, both of your cigars there for sure. <laughs> and just to know, uh, I spoke with uh, Noel Rojas last night. I mm. actually spoke with uh, David Jolly. Uh, is Noel Rojas's uh, right hand man here in Texas, uh, so he's going to be send. Uh, he's going to give me some stuff to send to you. Nice, uh, some blue bonnets and some statements, and uh, you know, I told him that we'd like to. We're, we're going to have them on the show, I, I believe, in a few weeks. Nice. So uh, we just got to get down that date and uh, have them on. Quick programming note for Amon: I only have one DAV left. Yes. Oh, not- <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Just, <laughs> I only have one left. <laughs> I was just complimenting my rep. He's on the ball. He's supposed to be on the ball with these he things, si- man. He, he, he's not shipping. He ain't shipping me any more cigars. He shipped me like three shipments, and 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 I can. Uh, and you know how many I've shipped him? Zero. It's it's bad. It's just you know. It, 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 it's like I said. Six five months is funny. Six months is sad. Terrible. It is my goal. To ship them. You know what? You know what? I'll make sure. I will personally make sure that you get your hands on some DAB cigars. Nice. I want to start and, reviewing them. And, yes. And I promise that uh, once the news breaks and we have our new blends, you guys will know all about it. Yes. I hope so. We get the exclusive. I hope so. You know, because everyone tells me, <laughs> well, you, go. Gonna- you heard it. You heard it here first. Right. Well, everyone tells me, well, we're going to give it to the magazine first, and then we'll call you. 
yeah, that's that's what that that's what they say. That's what they say. I know. That's the word on the streets, you know. The no, magazine. I you. The magazine doesn't have uh, Drew and 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 our uh, sparkling personalities. That's it, right That's there. True. Exactly. That's true. That's exactly. true. Awesome. Well, Armin, I want to thank you for appearing again on Story Geeks. Thank you for talking about My the BCA. Pleasure. I wish you uh, all the happiness and success uh, you, as you're out there on the streets. Safe travels back to New Appreciate York. Uh, when you come yes, back, sir. you come back home. Uh, to New York. I know there's no place like home, even though Texas is great, and you get to drive Aston Martins, but there's open road in Texas. <laughs> you can't drive that Aston yeah, Martin in New York. Yeah, I know. Because you'll be I doing know. 10 First miles of, an hour, right? Yeah, and, and if, uh, either that or I'll bottom out in one of the potholes anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's true. That's true. So you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Story Geeks listeners, Me I too. want to Thank you for watching episode 221 of Stogie Geeks. Check us out, facebook.com for slash Stogie Geeks. You know the emails. Behind every cigar, there's a story worth knowing. I want to encourage you to get out there and shop local and visit your brick and mortar shop. I want to say a very special thank you to Havana Cigar Club, JC Newman, McAuliffe Cigars, and Placentia Cigars. Stogie Geeks, we'll see you in a few weeks. Peace.